Hi friends, my name is Lexi and today I will be sharing with you a list of books that I would like to read over the summer. It is finally time for Hot Girl Summer. My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be sharing with you a semi-large stack of books that I would like to devour in the hot upcoming months. I am so excited to read all of these, buy a pool somewhere, sipping lemonade and iced tea and just like enjoying life, you know? But before we go ahead and get started with the list, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Hi friends, today's video is being sponsored once again by the amazing, the incredible, the fantastic, the one and only Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a fast growing book subscription service for book lovers everywhere. Every single month, their highly selective team hundreds of books to create a curated selection of books for you to choose from. Every month you can choose which book or books you'd like to be sent to your door, just log into your Book of the Month account, and choose which book or books pique your interest from their selection. And it's also completely risk-free because if there is a month where you are currently not vibing with the selected titles, you can do one of two things. You can either skip the month or you can choose from their backlist title selection. And they have so many good backlist books. I love Book of the Month for so many reasons, but one of my favorite reasons that I love them is because they literally feel like a book club. And to add to the feels of it feeling like a book club, they have actually just started a brand new podcast. So if you are interested in hearing author interviews or you're interested in finding a new book that you are going to fall in love with, I highly recommend checking out their podcast. I'll go ahead and leave a link for it down below. And you can listen to it on Spotify and also on Apple. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and check it out. And now for this month's selections. The first book is a thriller called The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. The next book is Woman of Light, a novel, and this is by Callie Fajardo Onstein. The next book is Things We Do in the Dark, a novel by Jennifer Hillier. Next up is The Lifestyle by Taylor Hahn. And finally is The Stardust Thief, which is an adult fantasy by Chelsea Abdullah. And while many of the titles sound really, really good, this is my personal pick of the month. It's about a girl who actually, with the help of her bodyguard, who is a djinn, sells illegal magic and she gets into all sorts of adventures. It sounds incredible. I'm so excited to read this. I think it's going to be really, really great. I highly recommend checking out Book of the Month. I love them so very much and I love working with them so very much. And if you have never used them, you can actually use my code, which is just my name, Alexandra, and you can get your very first book box for only $9.99. All of the information and links to the podcast will be down below in my description box and I think that's it. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. Okay, so usually I I feel like I do a pretty good job organizing my books into different categories. There are no categories this time, so just expect utter chaos, okay? So the first book I actually have on my Kindle. Okay, so the first book that I would like to read this summer is a book that I'm currently in the middle of, and it's called Legends and Lattes, a novel of high fantasy and low stakes. I actually found this book from TikTok, specifically from Ali Enchanted on TikTok, who is one of my friends, and she like really really enjoyed this book and it seems so cozy. If I'm being honest, it feels a little bit more like a fall read, but I did not want to wait until fall to start this because it just, like the cover makes it seem so cozy. And honestly, I feel like while cozy has a very distinct season of like fall and winter, I personally love reading cozy stories all year long. So this is a cozy fantasy and it's all about an orc named Viv who wants to retire from like adventures and things like that and she wants to open up a coffee shop. And so it's all about this really, really precious little orc named Viv who is trying to open up a coffee shop and all that entails and it is so cozy so far. I'm on chapter three, I love it so much. If you are interested in something that's a little bit more chill and a little bit more cozy, and maybe you don't feel like reading about the sunshine and you wanna feel super, super like cozy and comfy, kind of like a comfort read, maybe check this out. And I believe this is an adult fantasy book and I like love it so far. And it's also on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have a Kindle or if you have Kindle Unlimited, like you can 
you can just download it. Okay, before getting into my super, super like summary books, let me mention another fantasy that I think would go really, really well for the fall as well, but I couldn't wait. And that is Hotel Magnifique, and this is by Emily J. Taylor. This I think is considered a YA fantasy, and it is so good so far. I did start it over the weekend, and I like love the world. Emily is such a good writer. I can already tell just from the way she's introduced everything she's really got me hooked so this book is following two sisters our main protagonist name is Janny and she has always wanted to be a part of this thing called Hotel Magnifique and this is a hotel that travels almost kind of like a pop-up hotel like it shows up out of the blue and it's a hotel with all of these like extraordinary spectacular things it kind of reminds me a little bit of the night circus but in a hotel form and she's always wanted to stay in here but she and her sister are very very poor one day though, they see a sign that says that the hotel is um, hiring people and they both try to get a job at this hotel. And that's kind of like where it starts off. It's giving me like big night circus vibes. It's a very, very lush world so far. And I like already love the love interest that's being introduced. I think it's gonna be really, really fantastic. So if you are a person who loves fantasy and you love to be taken out of your world, maybe pick this one up because I have very, very high hopes for this. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about some middle grade. I am a huge fan of middle grade and I love reading middle grade specifically in the fall, in the winter, and in the summertime. And so I have a little stack of middle grades that I would like to for sure make time for this summer. The first one is a book that I've wanted to read for the past two summers. And I think this is finally gonna be the summer that I read it and that is Some Kind of Happiness and this is by Claire Legrand. This is a book that's exploring mental health in middle grade specifically. Um, our main protagonist, Finley's parents, are going through a divorce and Finley is going through, I think, depression and anxiety because of this really stressful situation. And she is sent to live with her grandparents for the summer. And her only escape seems to be in this magical and made up world that she has kind of sketched out for herself on paper. And while she is there at her grandparents' house, she goes to the back of their woods and she finds that her world that she has created actually exists. Now, I don't know exactly how much of this is going to be fantasy and how much is going to be more like make-believe, but I know that the topics are exploring mental health in middle grade, which I think is really, really important. And it also sounds like it's going to be one of those books that kind of rips out your heart, but in like the best way. So I have really, really high hopes for this. I think it's gonna be perfect for the summertime and I am so excited to read it. The next middle grade I have here is a book that I mentioned on my 22 books I want to read in 2022. I was saving this one specifically for the summertime and I am so excited. It is Hazel Bly and the Deep Blue Sea by Ashley Herring Blake. I don't know about you guys, but I think my favorite type of book to read in the summer is a book that takes place by the sea. There's just something about that that really transports me. So like more than vacation stories, I like reading about coastal towns and I like it to be really, really cozy so that I can pretend that that's me and I can live vicariously through the characters. But anyway, so this book is going to hopefully fill that void because it does take place in this really, really cute and quaint coastal village by the sea, I think in New England. So this particular book is following Hazel and Hazel and her family have just moved to a new town. And she, I think, is struggling because I'm pretty sure one of her moms has just passed away. And so now that she's at this little town, she is trying to kind of distract herself and she learns about a legend involving a mermaid. And so I think it's about her making new friends friends in this new town, kind of exploring her grief, but then also trying to find out more about this legend of a mermaid. And I'm really, really interested in it. I think it's gonna be so, so good. I love Ashley Herring Blake so much. I read Sunny St. James last year. Highly recommend if you have not read. That is like the perfect middle grade for summer in my opinion. So I'm really excited to pick this one up next. And then my final middle grade that I for sure really, really wanna get to is A Snicker of Magic and this is by Natalie Lloyd. I have had this book on my TBR for a while, but I've become re-intrigued by this from a YouTuber named Lindsay Puckett. I will leave her down below. And she actually has just written, well, I mean, she wrote it, I think a year and a half ago, um, her own middle grade, which is being published this year, which I'm so excited to read. 
Um, but she says that this is actually one of her favorite middle grades and I really like her taste in books. Like it seems like we have very, very similar taste in middle grades. So I bump this all the way up to the top of my TBR and I will for sure be trying to read this this upcoming summer. So this is a book that is following Felicity and Felicity likes to collect words. But one word that she has not been able to collect yet is a word called home. So she and her sister and her mom all live in this traveling little car, I think called the Jalapeno Pickle. <laughs> pretty sure, which is so cute. The three of them travel from place to place, but one day they actually stumble across this magical little town, which I guess used to have real magic. People would dance up thunderstorms and there were all of these magical everyday miracles that would happen, but all of the magic has gone away. And now Felicity wants to see if she can bring the magic back. So I love everything about this. I love the quaint town. I love the magical, almost like magical realism vibes that are going on. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, and I don't know, it seems like the perfect summer read to pair with ice cream. Yes. Okay, there are quite a few YA books that I really, really want to get to this summer, but the one that I know for sure I want to read and make a number one priority is going to be Family of Liars, and this is by E. Lockhart. If you know anything about me, you know that I loved We Were Liars. It's like my ultimate summer read, and so I'm really nervous going into this book because I have such high expectations for it, but I think I'm going to love it. So if you know anything about We Were Liars, it's about the Sinclairs who are very, very wealthy and they actually own their own private island in, I think, New England, like off the coast of New England. And it's all about how their family lies about things and how they all pretend to be perfect when they're really not and how money has created all of these like tensions between them. And this is the prequel. So we're not following the grandkids the way We Were Liars was following the grandkids. We're following like the parents as teenagers. And I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be really Really, really good. I hope it lives up to We Were Liars because that's one of my favorite books of all time. Okay, next up, let's talk some romance. So I feel like specifically in the summertime, that is my peak interest for a good romance novel. And the first one that I definitely wanna to get to is a book that I really wanted to get to last year but didn't, and that is Shipped by Angie Hawkman. This is described as the unhoneymooners meets the hating game, and those are two of my favorite adult romances, so I'm so excited. And this particular book is about two co-workers who absolutely can't stand each other and they're both trying to get the same position at their job. And then they're both sent on like a cruise where they have to pretend to be a couple. And they're kind of trying to figure out how they would market this cruise because their job is in marketing and whoever has like the best pitch when they come back wins the position. But obviously they're gonna end up probably falling in love on the cruise and like you love to see it, you know? It's Titanic 2.0. No, in this one, they both live. Oh, I wonder if they'll do it in a car. Okay, next up is this book. I actually purchased this book from my local indie bookstore, and I think it's gonna be perfect to read in the summertime, and it's called The Island of Missing Trees, and this is by Elif Shafak, and I think this is going to be really, really perfect for this season in particular. It's giving me big summer vibes. So this says, two teenagers meet at a cavern on an island they both call home. In the taverna, hidden beneath garlands of garlic, chili peppers, and creeping honeysuckle, Costas and Daphne grow in their forbidden love for each other. A fig tree stretches through a cavity in the roof, and this tree bears witness to their hushed, happy meetings, and eventually to their silent, superstitious departures. The tree is there when the war breaks out, when the capital is reduced to ashes and rubble, and when the teenagers vanish. Decades later, Costas returns. He is a botanist looking for native species, but really, he's searching for lost love. It just sounds really, really intriguing. I feel like the summary kind of gives me a little bit, but not necessarily a ton to go after, but the vibes of this seem like they will be perfect for the summertime. The next book I found is a book that I found from one of my besties channels, and that is Kaylin from Kaylin Abridged, and that book is Half of a Soul, and this is by Olivia Atwater, and I was so intrigued when I found out about this book because this is described as Howl's Moving Castle meets Pride and Prejudice, and like, you guys know I am on the biggest Bridgerton kick right now, so it seems like perfect 
for that Bridgerton mood. The opening here says it's difficult to find a husband in Regency England when you're a young lady with only half a soul. So this book is following Dora and Dora has unfortunately been cursed by a fairy so that she has like no embarrassment of any kind and that often leads to a scandal. And so she's really hoping just to be quiet so that she can get married right away and not cause any more scandals. And she captures the attention of a lord and this lord has been known to do three impossible things every day before breakfast and he becomes very interested in Dora. So that's all I know. It sounds a lot like a fairy tale. It's giving me like Stardust vibes. It's giving me Howl's Moving Castle vibes, but it's also giving me Bridgerton vibes. And I think this might just be my favorite book. Like I, I have a really good feeling for this book. I have very, very high hopes. So I'm very, very excited to read this. Um, and hopefully it's a five out of five stars. Speaking of other five out of five star predictions, we have another fantasy and that is Wild and Wicked Things. And this is by Francesca May. This is a book that I started, um, but I didn't get very, very far because I wanted to save it for the summertime. And all I really know about this book is that it's kind of inspired by The Great Gatsby but it's also involving magic and I believe it is sapphic. We're following our main protagonist, Annie, who has to go to a place called Crow Island where there is lots and lots of magic because she has just inherited this very, very large mansion. And I think while she's there, like all of these magical things start to happen and it's about her inheriting this magical house and like the romance that follows on this island in the summer. And it sounds so wonderful. I love that it's gonna take place kind of like in the 1920s. I love The Great Gatsby so much. I kind of want to reread it and then read this book, but I think this will be like the perfect book for summer to read by the pool. The next book I don't have because it's technically not out yet, and that is the newest Katie Robert book. In this new romance, we're actually following, I believe, Helen of Troy as well as Patroclus and Achilles. This is an adult romance series where things are very, very, very spicy and Katie Robert just does a bunch of retellings for different Greek myths. We've done Hades and Persephone's. We've also seen Eros and Psyche's retelling in Electric Idol. So I'm really, really excited to read this next one. I love Achilles and Patroclus and I've never read a Helen of Troy retelling. So I'm very, very intrigued. But again, summer is like my favorite time to devour adult romances. So I'm really excited. And then finally, the last two books I have here are kind of with like a trend that I saw was really Really popular last year. I haven't seen quite as much this year, but it's a trend called Hot Girl Summer, and it was all over TikTok last year. But essentially, these are books that you read kind of by the poolside, and they are books that typically center around either an unhinged main protagonist or a woman in their 20s trying to kind of figure out her life. They both sound very, very intriguing. Usually, these books are also considered literary fiction, and so I picked a couple books from this trending topic that I would like to read. And the first one is called Outline and this is by Rachel Cusk. So this particular book is following our main protagonist who is going over I think to Athens I want to say because she is teaching a writing course and the book itself is about 10 different conversations about life that she has with different strangers and these conversations actually shape the way she views the world. So I think this one is less like unhinged protagonist and more woman in her 20s trying to figure out like the meaning of life and where she stands in life. I love that this is a travel book and I love that we're following her to Greece. I think this is gonna be, again, like the perfect book to read by a pool. I just really, really wanna go swimming, you guys. That's like the main takeaway of this video. And then the last book for Hot Girl Summer that I have here is by Otesha Moshbeg, and this is my year of rest and relaxation. And this book is all about our main protagonist who has tragically just lost her two parents. They've both just died. And so she thinks that the way to kind of get over this is by being prescribed sleeping pills and just sleeping away a year so that sh when she like wakes up, she's no longer sad anymore. And I think it's a book that's really exploring depression and grief and sadness and mental health. And I think it's gonna be really sad, but I have heard really excellent things about this book. So once again, I have some pretty high expectations for it and I can't wait to read it this summer. But there you guys go. Those are all of the books that I would personally like to read this summer. I have 
more, but I, I think these are the ones that I for sure really wanna make sure that I get to. I did do pretty well with my spring TBR, by the way. Um, I was like reviewing that the other day and I read all but I think one book. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. But I do have a couple of questions for you guys. The first one is, are there any videos you would like to see me make this summertime? Please let me know down below in a comment. I am doing summer ween again because that was so much fun and I'm considering doing daily vlogs for it um, just because that's like, I think my favorite readathon at the moment. And I think it'd be really, really fun to try daily vlogging my experience this summer. But if there's anything you would like me to specifically vlog or create, please let me know because I'm always trying to do videos that I know you guys will like. And then finally, is there any book that you would recommend to me to read this summer? Or is there a particular book that you are excited for? I would love to know down below in the comments. And then finally, if you have made it to this portion of the video, please leave me the sun emoji. The sun is out. It is summertime. I am so excited. But I think that's it for now. Thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. All of the links will be down in the description. I highly recommend that you check them out. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at the time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time Met you